My name is Marina Sofos, and I'm a program director at ARPA-E. In this webinar, I'll be laying out key technical challenges that need to be overcome before the feasibility of wireless power transmission can be fully assessed at the power levels and distances necessary for flexible and distributed power distribution at scale. This technology is still in its infancy and too early for full exploration at ARPA-E. So if you have disruptive ideas that could inform further investigation of this topic, we'd love to hear from you. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues, Julia and John, for their contributions to this presentation. And so with that, let's dig in. The focus of wireless power transmission in this discussion is on situations where conventional wired methods are either not available or particularly cumbersome. In other words, cases that would compete rather than augment wired infrastructure where there's a value add. The topic of transmission capacity is covered in a separate webinar by my colleague, Scott Litzelman. So here, our motivation is threefold. For energy supply purposes, we are interested in use cases such as rural, off-grid, islanded, and infrastructure-limited communities where the reliance on expensive imported diesel fuel could be reduced. A reliance on local generators running on imported fuel or single distribution lines also exists when access to generation sources requires crossing protected or difficult terrain. Sometimes no other options exist and installation as well as maintenance of power lines is particularly difficult. Finally, flexibility in the provision of energy resources is necessary from a resiliency perspective in the aftermath of extreme weather events or natural disasters enabling emergency relief capabilities where otherwise extended power outages would occur. The concept of wireless power transmission was first envisioned by Nikola Tesla over a century ago for transferring electric power without the need for a physical link. Advancements in wireless technology for communication, remote sensing, and radar systems, along with microwave technology and the invention of the rectifying antenna have since enabled further exploration of this concept for power. In particular, near field applications based on non-radiative techniques, including inductive and capacitive coupling are now entering the market for consumer devices as shown on the far left of the graph. Areas of active research by NASA and the defense agencies for far field or radiative approaches shown throughout the rest of the graph include space-based solar power transmission to earth, the powering of unmanned aerial vehicles in flight from the ground, disaster relief, along with tactical microgrids to name a few. Initial prototypes have either been demonstrated or in active development for a number of these use cases. Now, relative to these applications, the use cases that would fall within our discussion would be at kilowatt and higher power levels and transmitting at kilometer range distances. So while the technology is still very much nascent for ARPA-E, the question is whether we can begin to make advancements to significantly improve the efficiencies for these ranges of interest while work continues on prototypes for military applications with similar specifications that we can learn from. Now, there are several early examples that have either been proposed or demonstrated that are worth presenting here and learning from. In 2001, a 700 meter wireless power link operating at 2.4 gigahertz was built and demonstrated from the main electric grid to a remote isolated mountain village on Reunion Island. The overall efficiency demonstrated was 6% in this case. In 2008, a NASA microwave system was designed across a 148 kilometer distance between islands in Hawaii with 20 watts of power. A one gigawatt link was proposed to deliver hydropower across the Strait of Belle Isle in Canada due to the difficulty posed by icebergs and other challenging terrain for laying out undersea cables. But this concept was ultimately scrapped due to high costs. 
And most recently, the company Emrod announced an upcoming field test of their system with New Zealand's second largest utility power co targeting difficult to access terrain. At this stage, it is too early for us to consider full system demonstrations, but the outcomes from these types of prototypes underway can help us further assess viability. In the interim, the extent to which the efficiencies of these systems can be improved needs to be further explored to establish the necessary foundation. As shown on the bottom right schematic, a wireless power system goes through several conversion and transmission steps with losses occurring throughout and reducing the overall end-to-end -end efficiency. As shown on the top right graph, to be able to make an impact in the application space discussed here, these efficiencies need to dramatically improve while also scaling the power levels and distances. It should be noted that the regulatory landscape also needs to be further fleshed out, but is outside of the scope of this discussion. Also, safety considerations need to be incorporated into any technology solutions. So with that, let's take a look at the technical challenges for each of the modalities in question for minimizing losses that occur in these types of systems today. To start with RF approaches and beginning with the transmitter or source on the far left. Challenges as power scales include reduced DC to RF conversion efficiencies, increased ohmic losses, and impact on lifetime reliability. Furthermore, heat dissipation becomes more important because more heat will be generated with the same percentage efficiency loss. Unfortunately, with higher frequencies, for example, millimeter wave, which are chosen for their shorter wavelength and better beam forming, the efficiency of the power device will decrease. Microwave vacuum tubes generally work better than semiconductor devices at higher frequencies, but are heavier. As distance scales, challenges include free space path loss, narrow beam formation, atmospheric attenuation, and innovations for relays and repeaters. Overall, the choice of transmission frequency presents a design trade-off here. For example, atmospheric atten attenuation becomes more of an issue as frequencies increase. On the receiver side, as power scales, the RF to DC conversion efficiencies decrease, thermal losses increase, and lifetime reliability is also impacted. Finally, potential interference from other RF systems, passive or active, need to be considered and evaluated and system level design decisions. On the optical side, as power scales, challenges on the transmitter or source side include the movement to 1.55 micron ranges, which is motivated by safety and reduces the need for additional interlocks or other similar features. These wa wavelengths are also used in fiber optic communications, but have received limited attention to date for these types of applications it might require different solar cells and lead to additional efficiency losses. As distance scales, atmospheric turbulence along with turbulence induced in intensity scintillations are a problem and innovations for adaptive beam shaping optics are necessary. Finally, the challenges on the receiver side include the thermal impacts on reduced conversion efficiency along with innovations in solar cells designed for optimal photoelectron conversions at the laser wavelength. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to this webinar. We love to hear from you on your ideas for overcoming any of the technology challenges laid out to improve wireless transmission efficiencies at scale. More information can be found at the links. <laughs>